Well, I want to thank um, Jenny for inviting me here. And uh, Jenny is just an incredibly powerful person. It just amazes me, the energy and, and enthusiasm she has for this. And I think it matches my energy and enthusiasm because I've been reading about this and writing about this for, uh, let's see, since about 1990. I had my first unassisted birth in 1978. I want to say also that my biggest concern about speaking here today is that uh, some of you have probably already been to my website or read my book, so uh, this is going to be a review, and I'm sorry, I'll try to make it as interesting as possible, but Jenny wanted me to talk about my births, and I think I will start at the beginning and how I um, arrived at unassisted childbirth. Uh, I met my husband in 1976, and he happened to be reading Childbirth Without Fear, which he was 28 years old and going to college, and that was kind of an unusual, he was single, you know, unusual book for him to be reading, but uh, he had discovered it in another book called um, The Five Ages of Man, and it had a very profound effect on him. And he was actually reading it for the second time the night that I met him. And he gave it to me. I began reading it, and it basically changed my life. And uh, the essence of, for those of you who haven't read Grantley Dickery's uh, book, Childbirth Without Fear, the essence of the book is that there is a loving, intelligent consciousness behind all of life, God or whatever you want to call it. This consciousness has designed birth perfectly, beautifully. We don't have to invent a better mousetrap. Uh, too many obstetricians or even midwives will try to have different techniques or things to try to improve on what a lot of people see as a flawed um, procedure or a flawed aspect of, uh, of our bodies, of, that, uh, that birth really hasn't been very well designed. And I think that that is really an insult to uh, the creator or the larger consciousness to say that uh, we need to improve upon this. So what Grantley Dickreed says is that there's basically two reasons why birth is painful and problematic. And that is interference from the outside, doctors poking, prodding, uh, telling a woman what to do, giving her medication, and interference from the inside, fear. He basically concentrates on fear. I've also studied shame and guilt and how they affect the body. So I just want to briefly explain, for those of you who don't know, what fear does to the body because it's such, it's really the, the heart of my work. That when you, or anyone who has been to my website knows that I really harp on this, but I think it's really important. That when you are in a state of fear, you trigger the fight-flight response. And what happens is that you send all the blood and oxygen out of, say, your face. That's why you turn white when you're afraid, because your body knows that the face does not need blood and oxygen right now. The arms and legs do, so that you can fight this danger or run away from it. So it thinks it's doing you a favor by draining the blood from non-essential organs and sending it into your arms and legs so you can fight the danger. What happens to a woman in labor who's afraid, which most women are because they've been raised in a culture that says birth is inherently dangerous and painful, the uterus is literally drained of blood and oxygen. Just like the face turns white, the uterus of a frightened woman in labor is literally white. It doesn't have the fuel that it needs, and so it can't function. Uh, the blood is being sent into the arms and legs, thinking, you've got to get out of here. You're in a dangerous situation. So you have a uterus with no fuel. You have all kinds of pain and problems. So what Grantley Dickreed says is that uh, what we really need to do is not trigger the fight-flight response. Michelle O'Dont goes into this too in that he says there is a, he's a French obstetrician who is supportive of unassisted birth. He says there is a birth reflex, he calls it, well, the fetus ejection reflex that will get your baby out. The same consciousness that grew your baby from a seed into a human being knows how to complete the process. The only thing you have to do is not inhibit that fetus ejection reflex. You don't have to be in there figuring out, you know, my God, birth is so complicated. It isn't complicated. It's supremely easy. The only thing you have to do is not inhibit that fetus ejection reflex. And the way you inhibit it is by being afraid and, you know, that because 
basically w the way the body has been designed, uh, digestion works on its own. You don't have to worry about how you digest your food. You don't have to understand how you digest it. You don't have to keep your heart beating. There is another consciousness that knows how to do that, as long as you don't interfere. And what happens in birth is that people are continually interfering. So birth can be supremely easy if you just don't interfere physically and psychologically. So when we decided to uh, have children, uh, let's see, maybe a year or so after we met, a year and a half, uh, I think I got pregnant. And we were also reading books at that time that dealt with the power of belief and how our beliefs create our lives. And we decided that, um, that if we were to give birth and have anyone else there, we felt that we would really have to spend time educating them that we felt that we had a better understanding of why birth is often problematic. And we didn't want to uh, spend any energy on convincing other people that uh, birth was really safe and we really could do it without outside assistance. So, and our faith at that point was very strong. And I would say that my faith has been tried over the years uh, because not everything has come to me as easily as birth did. But birth did come to me very easily. And I think because I just grasped this concept and allowed my body to work, um, I just let it happen. And uh, so during my first pregnancy, I decided to, what I needed to do was confront all the fears that I had about pregnancy, birth, motherhood, life. I just dove in there and I probably, I did some journaling. I've always done journaling. Uh, I looked at my dreams. Um, and, and just started exploring what is it that I was afraid of. And here's something that I don't generally talk about very often because it generally elicits a really angry response from people. And I went through this recently, if anybody is on the unassisted birth list, uh, morning sickness. This is just a real touchy subject with a lot of people. Uh, I believe that morning sickness is generally a result of fear. And so I had morning sickness one day with my first pregnancy, and I said to myself, okay, what is it that I'm afraid of? I felt that I had really started to work with my beliefs, my fears about birth. But for me, I realized I had a fear of motherhood. So I started saying belief suggestions, affirmations, that I wasn't afraid of motherhood, that I trusted my body, that I trusted myself, and I never vomited again with any of my other pregnancies. So I've talked about this and people are like, but wait a minute, that's just you, you're just lucky. You know? And I've heard that for like 25 years or 23 years, my oldest is 23, that I'm lucky. You know? And uh, with the, my births, well, I was lucky. Well, there, you know, maybe it just is in my family. Well, I can tell you that my mother and my sisters both had morning sickness throughout every pregnancy or all day sickness. So I think uh, uh, one thing I keep in mind is uh, a quote from Richard Bach and he says uh, argue for your limitations and sure enough they're yours so I hear a lot of people saying well morning sickness can be you know your body's way of getting rid of toxins or response to you know other things in the environment or this or that or whatever it is I believe that we can bring it under our conscious control I don't see why God would have created pregnancy to be a time of illness. Why should changing hormones, uh, you know, why should that make you throw up? I mean, to me it makes more sense that the fear of all the hormonal changes elicits that response. And here again it gets back to the fight-flight response. What happens?